Happy New Year, man fam! Hey there, man fam! It's New Year's Eve, so we're celebrating the only way millennials know how. Brunch. We are at Disney Springs, headed to check out a brand new restaurant. Nope. I'm sorry. I was gonna. I was doing like brunch restaurant. It did not go as I intended it to be. Take two. We are at. <laughs> we are headed to a brand new restaurant here in Disney Springs called Summer House on the Lake. Crushed. Just... Well done. <laughs> It just opened last week, so we are gonna see how it ranks amongst the other brunch contenders here at Disney Springs. I don't wanna brag, but I do consider myself to be a brunch connoisseur. And uh, I've therefore, I yeah, feel like we gotta go. A, you enjoy a restaurant, sorry. God, say, say your thing. <laughs> we haven't even had cocktails yet, but I do think this meal will be exquisite. <laughs> Everyone's, everyone's raving about it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. After that very professional and well-executed intro, we're off to brunch at Summer House on the Lake. And again, last year we did two brunches for our New Year's Eve, New Year's Day tradition. We went to Wine Bar George and Homecoming, two of my favorite restaurants in all of Walt Disney World. And I'm uh, excited to see if Summer House can hold a candle to those two amazing locations. Summer House on the Lake is the newest of the Summer House restaurants. They have several of these around the country. I believe one in Santa Monica as well as one in Chicago. The theme is Endless Summer, California inspired. You can certainly see that around the restaurant. I mean, there's a literally palm trees in here. A very light and bright in the area. I love the light fixtures. I love the wood right here. It makes me feel like it is summer, which we live in Florida, so it kind of is all the time, but the vibes in here are very good. And speaking of the vibes, let's do a little restaurant tour. Starting when you walk in, you've got the cookie bar right here. They are known for their cookies. They've got a bunch of different flavors. Can't wait to try some, but you don't have to eat here to get the cookies. You can just come in and order uh, from the cookie bar. They've got some coffee and cocktails there as well, which you can get to go. They've also got a bar area over here. This is first come first serve seating sometimes. So keep that in mind because reservations are hard to get. They're currently open for lunch and dinner every day. And then they also have brunch on the weekends. Walking through, you've got your main dining room, open concept kitchen to the left. In the main dining room, you've also got their famous rosé bar and you can see the dozens of rosé bottles up at the top. I love that sign in the back that says yes. And then out here, you can see why the restaurant is called Summer House on the Lake because you are out here on the water, you can see the balloon, you can see the boats going to Saratoga Springs, you can see the amphicars. It's beautiful out here if it's a nice day. Taking a look at their menu, it starts with the starters. <laughs> uh, with the What I'm looking at is the jalapeno cornbread from there, it moves to their signature guacamole. And then because we are here for brunch, they have their Cali Mex breakfast options, including things like their breakfast burritos and Mexican hash browns, as well as some eggs and how they prep those, and things from the griddle and iron, which include pancakes and waffles. From there, we have these salads, and they have a nice selection of salads that seem to run the gambit of different flavor profiles, including the kale and cashew, as well as classics like a house salad or a Cobb salad. And then it moves to their veggies, which would be some side vegetables like caramelized Brussels sprouts and shishito peppers. From there, it moves to the sandwiches, which includes things like the classic cheeseburger and a crispy chicken sandwich. And then it moves to Southern Comfort, which includes things like fried chicken and barbecue glazed salmon. Oh, and steak frites, ooh hoo hoo. All right, well, our appetizers have arrived, and you know, there's a chance we overordered, but it all looks delicious. So, we've started with their signature guacamole, and it's come with three side sauces. They have pico de gallo, a charred tomato, and a habanero verde. We also picked up the jalapeno cornbread with honey butter because my southern roots wouldn't let me not pick that up, and these cheesy dream puffs. We also picked up the potato salad deviled eggs because we know that those are Molly's favorites. And I'm interested to see how the potato salad translates into the deviled eggs. Our first round of cocktails have also arrived. I went with the jalapeno business, which is Blanco tequila, dos hombres, grapefruit soda, and jalapeno agave. I'm hoping for like a tart, spicy, refreshing situation. And Alan went with the lavender haze, which is aviation gin, blueberry, lavender, and lemon. And I had to tell Alan that's a Taylor Swift song. Oh, I was worried this was going to be sweet. It actually isn't very sweet. It's certainly not like a punch you in the face with the alcohol flavored beverage, but 
You can certainly taste the gin, it's very spicy. And then follows with the lavender and blueberry. It's actually really refreshing and nice. I love grapefruit and drinks, so I'm hoping this is delicious. Oh, that's dangerous. It does taste like summer. Light, refreshing, a little bit of jalapeno. Not too sweet though, I actually wish there was a little stronger jalapeno flavor. But mostly it's just a very refreshing, can taste the tequila, summery beverage. Oh yeah. These are delicious. They're the consistency of Brazilian cheese bread, which means they're like very spongy on the inside, very starchy, cheesy. They have rosemary in them, which you can taste. They're definitely very cheesy, but they're not like overwhelming, like eating a mozzarella stick or something like that kind of crispy on the outside. These are fantastic. I would definitely get these again. And now for a potato salad deviled egg. I'm very excited to see how different this tastes from just a regular deviled egg. Oh my God. Really tastes like potato salad. My family's Midwestern, which means potato salad is served at basically every meal. And this is delicious. It's really creamy potato salad. You've got the mustard flavor. You've got a crispiness and a saltiness from the capers on top. Really smooth egg. It's got a little bit of the paprika as well, which you associate with deviled eggs. So these are very good deviled eggs, but it does taste like classic potato salad too, which is wild. All right, and I'm going to try the jalapeno cornbread with honey butter. And it looks like it has corn in it as well. So this is like one of the uh, creamed corn style cornbreads, which I do enjoy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh wow, this is a very moist cornbread. It falls apart in the mouth, it still has a little bit of structure from the chunks of corn and jalapeno in there. And y'all, there is heat on this, which makes my heart happy. As a, as a southern boy, this is, um, this is right up my alley. If you're a spice averse, this might be too spicy for you, but I'm thrilled that at a restaurant at Disney Springs, there's jalapeno in something and I can taste it. And now for the guac. Avocados are fresh, ripe, still a little chunky. There's some acidity to it from the lime. Some red onion and peppers in here as well. And a hefty amount of cilantro. So if you're one of those folks who think cilantro tastes like soap, I'm sorry this might not be for you. But I find this delicious. It's just a very solid guacamole. I'm very much going to enjoy this. Here, I prepped this for you. Going in, with the salsa. going in for the sauce. Uh, nice up for the sauces here. I'll try the crushed tomato. Crushed tomato is just that. It's like a roasted tomato that has been crushed. The salsa verde is delicious. It has a little bit of heat, tons of flavor from that habanero. That's awesome. If you were going to choose a favorite of these four appetizers, which one would it be? It's the cornbread for me. Cornbread for you. I gotta say, I am loving the cheese puffs, but I also really like their take on the deviled egg. I think that's the most unique thing. So, all good so far though. Entrees have arrived, and once again, there's a possibility we ordered too much, but you know what? <laughs> you know what, that's the beauty of living locally. We've already got some stuff in boxes, and let's just say, dinner later is gonna bang while I'm finishing Last of Us 2, because that's my goal tonight. I'm almost done. It's very scary, but we're almost through. Anyway, uh, we got three entrees. Here's the other one right here, but that one's salad. So that's just for health. Uh, here we have the tostadas. This is part of their brunch menu. It's got pulled chicken, silky black beans, ranchero sauce, jack cheese, and sunny side up eggs. It comes with some of their pico and guacamole. So excited for this because I love the Tex-Mex flavors. I guess Cali Mex in this case. Now this is a salad that is on their all the time menu. So you could get this if you came for lunch or dinner, not on the weekend. And it is the shaved Brussels sprout salad with manchego cheese, bacon, avocado, toasted almonds, green peas, and a mustard vinaigrette. You can add a protein to it. We added grilled chicken. What do you got going on over here? And I have the skirt steak frites, which is also on the regular menu under the summer comfort section with guajillo chili, cilantro, lime butter, and garlic fries. Oh, oh, oh yeah. It's heavy. It's got some weight. <laughs> yeah. I love a, love a fresh lime. This is not going to be graceful, but when is, my, when is my eating ever graceful? It 
it's like my dreams coming true because it's Mexican brunch. So it's beautiful. I love the really runny egg and how that's gooey gooey down the tostada. The tostada itself is crispy, crunchy. There's actually a little bit of heat, so if you're spice adverse, be warned. Tons of the black beans. It's almost like kind of hard to navigate with how many black beans. Little nuttiness from the queso fresco. Uh, you could probably eat this with a fork. I don't know why I thought I should pick it up and just eat it with my hands. But if you like Mexican food, if you like Tex-Mex and you like runny eggs, this is a very delicious dish. I'm also very excited about this Brussels sprout salad. I legitimately love salad, so I hope it's good. No. That's better than this. I know. I know. I'm sorry. What? This is awesome. There is no shot it is that good. Okay. 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 That is good. I see you. I see you, Summer House, by the way. Okay, I could get this without the protein and be perfectly happy. It's got the crispity crunchiness of the Brussels sprouts. They're not soggy. Um, the light mustard vinaigrette, and then you've got the crunch from the almonds as well, and then that kind of nuttiness from the manchego cheese. There's some citrus in here too. This is something, oh, and some saltiness from the bacon. This is something I'm gonna order because it's light. It's not gonna leave me feeling heavy. I all have room for cocktails and cookies, but it's still unique and different and not something I'm gonna make at home. And now time for some steak frites. Well, that was incredibly easy to cut through, so that's some good early indications there. Some fries, some steak, a little bit of an aioli situation. The steak is incredibly tender. <clears throat> Cooked to perfection, medium rare. A little charred on the exterior, which is exactly what you want. The fries are the thin, sort of fast food style fry, but done up incredibly well because they're coated in garlic and parsley. And that aioli is like a, a garlic and a little bit of chili flavor, not spicy chili, but just like the smokiness of the chili. That's so good. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big portion size, but this is incredibly well done. I'm shocking even myself right now. This is not what I thought I would have said coming into this meal, but for the entree ranking, I'm going one, two, three. We've got another round of drinks, and if there's one thing you can count on us for, it's to review something that you can't get anywhere else. And an old fashioned. I snagged a small glass of their house rosé, which is made with Merlot grapes. That's delicious. I actually think we got rosé last year at Weimar George. It's weird, because I don't always drink rosé, but when I do, this is what I want it to taste like. It's a New Year's brunch. It's a New Year's theme, apparently, is drink rosé. It's crisp, it's dry, it's a little sweet. It is perfect for drinking on a patio. It fits the vibe in here. If you're a rosé drinker, I'd absolutely recommend this. If you like sweet drinks, it's not a sweet wine, so it's not what you want. It's not a Moscato or anything. It's it's a dry, crisp rosé. It's great. And it's made just for them, so that's why I had to get it. And I got the old-fashioned because of course I did. This is made with Brothers Bond whiskey, lemon demerara, and orange bitters. So a very citrusy sounding beverage. I'm excited to try it. Interesting. So it's a sweeter old-fashioned than I'm used to. Um, if you're looking for an introduction to old fashions, maybe you're worried that whiskey's gonna be overpowering. I think this is a really good place to start because it's not punching you in the face with the whiskey. It's a very, very mild and light whiskey. And then the citrus is really bright and refreshing. This is the first time I've ever had an old fashioned where I think to myself, yes, I could sip this beverage on a beach. <sighs> Finished a lovely meal at Summer House. Took a lap around and we now have a massive bag of food to go to enjoy later today. And you know there's cookies in that bag. It's a bag in a bag. Yeah. Bagception. Bagception. Now, before we get into the cookies, how did you feel about the meal? Sorry, we found a bench. I was on the bench. I was over on the bench. Yes. How did I feel about the yeah. restaurant is what you asked. Yeah. Sorry, the relocation scrambled my brain. I'm walking a mere 40 feet has, has truly been problematic. Is that 40 feet? Absolutely not. It was maybe 20. 
Anyway. I don't understand distance, but that feels long. Distance and time zones. Listen, those are your Achilles heels. I will say, I think it was a very good experience. I thought the food was fresh, light, uh, very tasty. It's going to be a little bit on the pricier side, just looking at the menu. I think it fits in the conversation with Homecoming and Wine Bar George. Yeah, my, my first question when going there is like, why would I come here versus Homecoming or Wine Bar George? Because while they had fried chicken on the menu, I, if I want fried chicken, I'm coming to Homecoming. Um, but I think that where it really shines is it's a lighter, brighter restaurant. So if you're looking for something that's flavorful and unique, but you don't want to feel heavy because you've eaten a lot of theme park food, I think you're going to find it there. Like, I'm already so excited to come back next week with one of my girlfriends and order another salad because the salads were excellent. I also thought the starters were great. Oh, sure. The cornbread in particular, which I've got to be honest, I was nervous about because this is a... Uh, California-based, Santa Monica-based restaurant. So I was thinking, are they going to do cornbread? And, and you know what? They crushed. Also, those potato salad deviled eggs, I would definitely eat those again. Um, I think I'm most excited, again, salads to come back and then also just do apps and cocktails. I thought their cocktails were great. I like that they're light, refreshing, um, they're much different than kind of the cocktails you're going to get at somewhere like Homecoming. I'm, I love Homecoming's food. I don't love their cocktail menu because uh, a lot of them are really sweet. And I thought that Summer House had a perfect, like, refreshing, delicious, unique cocktail situation. But now it is time for the cookie reveal. I stand by it, this is a bad idea. <laughs> I had a good idea to hold all the cookies for a shot, but this is not really this, working. This is, a this is a bad idea. Is it, does it look good? Yeah. <laughs> Looks great. It's certainly not weird. We gave up our bench to a nice family that wanted to sit there. First up, Chocolate chip Rice Krispie treat. That is a good chocolate chip cookie. The addition of the Rice Krispie treat though, that's wild. That is a whole new texture element. You're gonna be chewing that one for a while, but it's very good. And I think the best part is it's not super sweet. Next now up. we have the vegan snickerdoodle. I do love a snickerdoodle. That's a good cookie. I don't think I would know that was vegan if I didn't know, which is the mark of a good vegan cookie, in my opinion, as someone who's not vegan. It's chewy, it's really cinnamony, it's not super sweet either. Like, obviously, it's a, these are desserts, they're sweet, but it's not like sickly sweet. That's awesome. If you like a snickerdoodle, these are very good. Next up, we have the ginger snap. Now, I have to tell you, I'm used to ginger snaps that are smaller and have snap. I'm my preferred ginger snap, at least in my head, is one that's very crispy. This at first touch is soft. Whoop. I'm gonna break off the edge here, just a touch. Okay, I'm proving, I'm happy being wrong. <laughs> Yo. Wow. I mean, it's just super gingery. You have the spice from the ginger, that sort of light tingling on the back of the throat. It's very, very good. You need to like ginger to enjoy this. It has sugar crusted on the top, so it is gonna be a little bit sweeter, but I think as far as the cookies that I've had so far, so of the three, this one takes the case right now and has jumped to my number one. And now for Molly's most anticipated cookie, the lemon cookie. It is so big, it's as big as my face. That is a, they're all big cookies. You know where Gideon's goes like up, it, yeah, it builds these up, go these out. out. Look at that, look at that. I mean, it's so soft, it's falling apart. Guys, y'all, I have found a new favorite dessert in Disney World. You obviously have to like lemon. You have to like the tartness that is lemon, but it's got this nice light glaze on top to balance how tart it is with a little bit of sweetness. It is moist, it is chewy, it is deliciousness. It's like a lemon bar. If a lemon bar were a cookie, this would be it. I still love Gideon's and I love that peanut butter and that Oreo cookie from Gideon's, but this is a contender. If I didn't want to feel so heavy, like, wow. It's I'm, just so I'm, light and refreshing. I'm blown away by this cookie right now. And last, we have the apple. Oh my gosh, it's falling apart. I can't, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it all out. Like it's just a, a slab of dessert. An apple and oatmeal, you can see the chunks of apple in the cookie itself. Cheers, please be good. Whoa. You need to like oatmeal cookies? I love oatmeal cookies because there's a lot of that texture within this cookie. You also need to love apple and caramel because those are the big flavors and textures you are getting 
throughout this cookie. You have the chunks of oatmeal, along with the softness of the apple, and then very clearly on the base, it's cooked to where it's crispy on the base of the cookie. Wow. This is an anomaly. I think that this is going to be something for a very specific group of folks like me who enjoy this type of cookie. I can see this not being for everybody, but for me, with that flavor profile, I really enjoy it. I, again, I'd hesitate to call it a cookie, but it's pretty tasty. All right, cookie ranking time. Cookie ranking time. Number one, no surprise for me, the lemon. Mm -hmm. Number two, the ginger snap. Mm -hmm. Number three, the snickerdoodle, mm -hmm. number four, the apple cinnamon, and number five, the chocolate chip crispy. I just don't love chocolate chip cookies. I know that's like a very high take. They're just not my preferred kind of cookie. So yeah, all very good though. I was very impressed with the cookies. Well, I echo your sentiment. My top five is gonna be a little different. Number one is the ginger snap. Mm -hmm. Number two is the lemon. Number three, snickerdoodle. Mm -hmm. Number four, chocolate chip. And number five, the apple cookie. But here's the question. Uh -huh. You're on a hunt. You're, you got a hankering for a cookie treat. You're here in Disney Springs. Huh. Where are you going? Gideon's or somewhere else? All right. So we're assuming no line at either. No. You can factor that in. I, th I think I think it has to be said that Gideon's is hard to get to. Yeah. Gideon's is amazing, but it often has either a 20, 30 minute standby line or you have to do a virtual queue that could be hours before you get called back to then stay in that standby line. So that, that is that part is of the Gideon's experience. I think if I'm factoring in from end to end of the experience, I'm probably gonna go Summer House. Because one, ease of access. Yeah. Two, they still have a huge variety of cookies. And three, they're lighter. The entire vibe of that restaurant is that it's gonna be a lighter eating experience. They're like literally polar opposites in vibe. Exactly. <laughs> so Gideon's is rich, it's decadent. It's I think spooky you, inside. it's spooky. You have, I, I, I'm of the opinion that if you're visiting Disney Springs and you love cookies, you should go to Gideon's. Yes. But if I'm coming here as a native and I want to go and grab a cookie, I'm probably going to Summer House. Yeah, I think it depends what kind of cookie I'm in the mood for. I loved that lemon cookie so much. And again, it was lighter and it was easier to get than Gideon. So I think I could get that one a lot. Mm -hmm. That said, I love the Gideon's peanut butter. I love the Gideon's cookies and cream. And I love Gideon's coffee. So yeah. I don't think you can go wrong either way. Just know there's another great cookie in town now. And because this is the New Year's special, uh, let's do what we did last year. Last year we set goals for, we set like what we were excited about for pop culture, uh -huh. content, uh -huh. and then like personal goals. So I think we should recap those and say if we achieve them or not, and then do it again for 2024. All right. So for pop culture, I said I was most excited to see Guardians 3 and Barbie. <laughs> I said that I was excited to see the Dungeons and Dragons movie and play Baldur's Gate. Uh, did you do those things? I didn't see the Dungeons and Dragons movie. Huh? We just got caught up in life when yeah, that came yeah, out. Yeah. But uh, I, boy, have I played Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> it's fun? Yeah, yeah, I love it. Um, I, we saw Guardians 3 and boy, did I cry a lot. <laughs> Same. That's an emotional punch in the gut. And then saw Barbie 2 and boy, did I cry a lot. <laughs> I can speak to that. Yes, yes, that happened. Barbie quite literally is one of my top five favorite movies of all time now. I absolutely loved it, so I am so glad that movie exists. Uh, for content and work goals, we said we wanted to cruise on more cruises, preferably on a non-Disney cruise line, as well as some Disney cruises. We wanted to go international, and we wanted to check out more places that weren't Disney and Universal. For those, we did cruise more. We did not go on a non-Disney cruise line, though maybe next year is our it's year. On my, I'm putting it back on the list for 2024. We sure did go international to Japan. Oh, amazing. <sighs> and we did a lot of non-Disney oh, content, non-Universal content as well. That was one of our big goals of Mammoth Club in general. We went to Knott's Berry Farm. We did some videos in cities like New York and LA and Japan and Tokyo. Yeah. Um, we did uh, different exhibits and things like that. So I thought that was some of my favorite content of the year, actually. And speaking of favorite content, favorite mm. videos of the year, what were some of your highlights as far as like things we did, things we made? Well, I think we have to both eliminate Japan because that trip in and of itself was just such a surreal dream trip. Yeah, that's, um, that's the elephant in the room. Yeah, for it's like, sure. Duh. The mammoth in the room. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, and other than that, I think for me it was Nintendo World in Hollywood. Oh, that was cool. Wasn't that the first land we opened as Mammoth Club? I, like, we I, that? I think so, which is really cool and it, it's a really fun interactive land and we had a great time out there. That's a good choice. Um. I also really enjoyed the same thing with Minion Land. Like I really enjoyed oh, yeah, opening Minion that Land up. It was too. like a surprise sleeper hit. It was, of fun. It was a ton of fun. Of fun. Um, what about you? 
obviously I love the seasonal stuff. I've said it before. I've said it on BTS podcasts. So oh, yeah. thank you if you've already heard yeah. this. For your BTS again. listeners, you um, might have heard some of this. <laughs> um, I love Halloween. It's my favorite holiday, and we had a banger Halloween. Uh, so Stranger Things, Last of Us, Chucky, like so many IPs I love. We're at Halloween Horror Nights, and we got to do Coast to Coast Halloween Horror Nights, which was amazing. And we got to do Oogie Boogie, like and yeah. oh, yeah. not like Sanderson. Like it just Halloween Cruise. So Halloween season was my favorite season. It was um, a Halloween season. Yes, it was. And speaking of cruises, um, I had a dream to go on the Disney Wish, um, and I wasn't sure when that dream would come true, and it and it did earlier Twice. this year. So Twice yeah. This year. That was really special to get aboard the Disney Wish. And as far as non-theme park stuff goes, I still cannot believe they made a play of my favorite movie of all time. That we got to see it on Broadway and then talk to Ian Shaw, who is the living embodiment of Quint from Jaws. And I still can't believe that happened. Also Shark Week. Oh yeah. (laughs) Shark Week special. Like dreams come true um what are you excited about for content stuff like next year what do you want to make what's on the what's on the Uh, agenda well i think the big thing that we missed is we didn't do a non-disney cruise so i'd love to do that i think it'd be a ton of fun just to go and experience what that is like outside of the disney sphere let us know which cruise line you would like to see down in the comments i've thought about virgin that one looks amazing maybe royal caribbean so let us know what you're thinking um i would like to go international again and maybe add another castle to our to our rolodex to our resume of of castles we've seen so no hard plans yet but we're we're looking we're looking and i think you know i really enjoy cooking and i enjoy like the the act of like making treats so maybe there's an opportunity to represent that in some of the content more i would love that i as the person who gets to eat it (laughs) um and lastly kind of more locally more immediately um a lot of big changes are coming to disney world very early this year dining plans coming back no park hopper restrictions so i'm excited to get creative and see what we can make with kind of the our home parks that we get to love and enjoy and see what's fresh and new there that's gonna be fun and last one yes what are your like personal resolutions, goals, etc. for 2024? Ooh. Um, I think for me, it's continuing on the mental health journey, right? I think we all benefit from that and being aware of how our past impacts our present and how we see the world and make decisions and then being willing to accept those things and then change for the better and continue to try to be the best version of uh, ourselves that we can be. So that's, that's a journey that's very personal to me and the, the going on that. And then secondarily, I really enjoyed the creative process of being present more on Mammoth Club since you know quitting my full-time corporate job and then coming over to Mammoth. And then also the small creative stuff outside of Mammoth. Like I've really loved getting back into trading card games like Lorcana and making videos like on that. And that's been a ton of fun to exercise uh, my creativity there. So those are, those are for me. What about you? I'm going to echo the mental health thing. I think continuing with therapy and just kind of learning how to, how I process things and dealing with anxiety and how I can change for the better and and be less stressed as a person and less anxious as a person. Um, And Another thing that I've, I want to continue doing, one thing I started this year was, I we joke, but I became a gamer. Molly's a gamer now. <laughs> and uh, I've truly never been a video game person. Even growing up, I didn't really play video games. And um, I have played a few games through this year, and I love it because it uh, makes me put my phone down, not check emails, not look at a calendar. Like, you're physically holding a controller, so you can't do anything else. And truly, like, mentally escape from everything else. So I want to continue that as well because I think that's been really good for my brain and something I do just for me so I'm happy you're doing it I'm I'm loving it if you've got a game recommendation let me know I've played Hogwarts Legacy and the two Last of Us games so far so well let us know what you're looking forward to in the coming year for you and yours and just know that we appreciate you yes thank you guys so much as at the year ends always that time of reflection and when we look back and I look back over all the amazing things we've gotten to do this year uh, we couldn't do that without any of you guys so thank you thank you so much for being here we truly love you and appreciate you in the meantime friends be sure to like this video subscribe if you are new follow us on all of our socials and if you want to join in the conversation about this or any of our other videos please join us on discord the links for all that are down below and until next time friends i'm molly and i'm alan and it's been so magical so magical bye see you next year yes. i love that joke nailed it it's so good never gets old nope it's amazing